So the third one is physical or a friendship intimacy. Um, probably one of the neat ones. There's a lot of things that come out of this, and it's probably one of the more powerful bases that we can base our life from. You know, we have uh, a couple of quotes here, like, "What is a friend? A single soul and two bodies." Uh, to be friends, to rich and friends is to be poor and nothing, by Lillian Whittington. So the word family uh, in it comes to mind when we think of friendship. You know. And we all are, you know, a family or a friendship because we come together and we're all friends. And like I said earlier about the sandbox, it's as easy as just being friendly. You know, you're, you're next to the guy that's, uh, you know, your neighbor's kid or whatever. You don't even know his name. It's like, can I play with your truck or, you know, <laughs> like this idea of the sandbox. And I say that we should probably practice this intimacy everywhere we go. This is quite powerful because I was thinking of this last night is that it's such a neat and safe place to be. You can be friends with your postman, you can be friends with your bus driver, you can be friends with your boss, you can be friends with a lot of people. And I think we should go out and, and be friends with people and be friendly with people that we don't know because this way they get to know us and they'll go, oh, I want to know why you, what makes you tick. You seem to be happy all the time. You seem to have answers for stuff or you seem to have a glow about you. And that's one way that we can share the gospel because people see into our lives because once they enjoy that friendship playing, they're like, oh, I understand you. I know who you are. And I can see, well, you're, you don't react the same way as I thought you would or other people do. And I think also in the Bible, in Genesis, this comes back to my uh, seminary days in, in, in uh, Ambassador, that we describe Adam and Eve, obviously, there's, there's a relationship, right? There's a family. There's, there's friendship right there. Um, and then it goes on to describe the family unit, you know, where we've got uh, Adam and Eve, and then you've got uh, Abel and Cain, and all these, as you grow up, and you start seeing, you know, the family uh, theme in Genesis sort of developing. And then you see cities being developed and correlating and uh, the theme that I got when I was back in uh, Old Testament class there was that we are designed as relational beings. We're designed to be relating to one another. We're designed to be sharing with each other and sharing our lives with each other and, and actually you know, having a community where we depend on each other. So friends, that's where we've got that friendship base uh, where we can actually you know, be friends to each other and develop that friendship. Very safe and stable base. You'll often hear of relationships where people say, well, uh, um, you know, we, we did the romance thing and now we're not friends anymore. I was like, well, I think if you're friends, you should be able to develop that friendship thing and then decide if you're going to go to that physical level or emotional level before you actually get there. I had a slide that talked about cold people. Uh, this was just to say that there is a lot of really bah humbug people out there. You know, people that really are dysfunctional, maybe by past hurts, they just don't want to be in relationships, they don't want to be involved with things, they just don't want to let people in. And, you know, we, we have a chance to share, you know, on that intimacy, that friendship intimacy, to be friends with them, even sometimes they're tough and, you know, they, they really don't want to let people in. But after they get nurtured and sometimes, you know, they're, they're healing some of their dysfunctionality, then uh, they'll be healed people. And I don't think that they want to be that way. It's just that a lot of them, you know, ah, forget it, you know. Life is giving me a raw deck. I'm just going to feel this way. So the power with this in this intimacy is uh, it's often overlooked because, you know, it, but it does harness a lot of power, like I said, because it's, uh, where everyone meets and everyone has sort of a common base. Um, our creator created relationships, and he put it at the center of our being, like I said. I put a note here, because obviously this was to an unchurched crowd or whatever. Um, no other intimacy should be ventured before this intimacy is developed. Uh, doing so weakens the relationship and maybe cripples it, uh, like the guy putting you know, gas on the fire or whatever, like an affair, right? boom, you got all sorts of good stuff happening. Do you know each other? You have friends? Can you, you know, there's nothing else. When that other intimacy just fades away, you got nothing left. At least if you've got a friendship intimacy, for one thing, you can actually see what they're like around their friends, see what they're like around their parents, see what they're like at different, you know, uh, parts, compartments, or different compartments of their life and see if they're the same. Um, and you get to see, you know, do they have lots of friends? Do they like people or stuff like that? 
There was an idea, and I wrote a little bit about soulmates and best friends. Soulmates is kind of an interesting thing because I was curious. A lot of people believe you need to marry your soulmate or you need to find your soulmate or something like that. Uh, I think this is a Greek idea that you have to find, you know, some soul that you shared with or something. Anyway, <laughs> totally, I don't think it's true at all. Um, but best friends definitely is. And I think the way you develop best friends is by sharing and interacting and being with friends. Uh, so that's, that's very powerful. So here's some of the sort of the, side, the effects or the, uh, the blessings that come from relationships or friendships. Uh, a gift. And I got a couple of quotes here. A person is only complete when he or she has a true friend to understand her, him or her, to share her passions and sorrows with and to stand by him or her through her, her life. That's hard to put that back in the plural. <laughs> Let me write that again. A person is only complete when she has a true friend to understand her, to sh- understand all her passions and sorrows with and to stand by through, throughout her life. Another one by Mark Twain. Um, Grief can take care of itself, but to get full value out of joy, you have to have someone to divide it with. (laughs) I thought that was pretty neat. And uh, that goes along with the idea that uh, when you're at Disney World, whoa, Mickey's here, wow, that's great. But to share it with people, that's half the reason why we take photos, is because we want to interrelate and say, hey, look what I saw, or hey, look what I did. Um, So that's, you know, being a friend and having friends there. Growth. Another couple of quotes. Two are better than one because one has a good reward for their labor. But if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone who has fallen. For he has not another one to help him up. Of course, with the old English there, that's definitely uh, <laughs> King James Ecclesiastes. Proverbs twenty four twenty six says, An honest answer is a sign of a true friend. So in terms of growth, you want to know, how do I improve myself? You know, how do I look in the mirror? Well, friends is a good base for that, uh, and Proverbs uh, explains that there. It also says in Proverbs 27, 6, a friend means well even when he hurts you, and that's very true. Support, another um, great thing about friendship. Uh, a couple more quotes on support here. Friendship is a candle whose flame uh, glows brighter when the hour is darker. So when you really know that you got a friend uh, when you when the hour grows dark and uh, someone's there for you. And uh, that's nice to feel that, to know that. You know, when you don't have friends who say, oh, yeah, I say, oh, we'll do lunch, we'll talk to you, thanks, oh, you got me a friend. And then you sprain your ankle and no one's there to help. <laughs> Jason Friesen is a good friend. I was sick at college once uh, for a week. I couldn't eat. I, was, I couldn't walk. I was just like out. I don't know what the heck, some bug or something. And he brought religiously every meal to me. I thought, Jason... You're a true friend, <laughs> and he is a true friend. And, you know, th- that comes to here. You think, wow, you know, that, that you can count on those people. You know, you just, you know, f- three in the morning, you call them up. Hey, you know, I need you to drive me somewhere. Oh, okay, <laughs> what would you do, you know? Well, we, we, we fell down. <laughs> so, you know, those are good friends. Another quote is, uh, Thus nature has no love for solitude and always leans, as it were, on some support the sweetest support is found in the most intimate friendship. And that's from Sierio. Um, don't know who that is, but I like the quote. Or C- I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I'll find out later from Evelyn. Um, another quote, a friendship understands you even when uh, you, you, your thoughts aren't fitting into words. You ever had those times where you just, you just can't do it and a friend comes along and helps you out? If all my friends were to jump off a bridge, I would jump uh, with, I wouldn't jump with them. I'd be at the bottom to catch them. I thought that was a really cute quote. So he's there to support you. Uh, friends make you whole. Uh, two more quotes here, I think. Material things can't make the soul whole. Only the love, trust, and loyalty of friends can do that. And a friend is someone who reaches hard for your hand but touches your heart. I love that one. And it's true, you know, like, oh, I'll help you out, but I, I really want to be there with you. Instead, instead of just mere action of what we're doing. 